Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We have uh, Tim Alexander, our historian, geopolitical military analyst on. He's often uh, putting up reports on our live stream channel. If you're a customer, if you're a member of our Nutramedical team, you actually get access uh, free if you've been a customer of the last six months or so because you have the passwords. And I Tim, need to do that today. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm no, sorry. Yeah, no, Tim, uh, I was just reading a report. It's interesting. You've heard of uh, uh, Major Ed Dames, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I want people to understand this, and I'm just going to actually, um, you know, I, I want to read this off to people because they have to understand that I've been talking about this for some time, uh, a long time actually, that we're in grave danger of coronal mass ejection. And, of course, the report was that, in fact, they're saying that, quote, there's a grave danger of a major uh, CME or coronal mass ejection occurring as ISON passes. Major Ed Dames has now come out saying he's in a big panic. He's going to have all kinds of meetings about this. I've been saying this now for several years. And we t- recently uh, were able to, to obtain Professor McCann. He was on uh, just last week. In fact, he'll be back on next week. But he was on, uh, I believe, on earlier last week, talking about the danger of ISON, which is unusual because you usually name it after the astronomer rather than the astronomical organization. The core or kernel of this comet is probably up, up to 2,600 kilometers across, according to, to Professor McCann. And... Uh, because of its trajectory, we don't know exactly what it'll do, but if it, it causes a CME, and it will cause a CME because it's going to pass within 700,000 miles of the sun, if that CME is Earth-centric, we're going to have a Carrington-style type uh, coronal mass ejection event, <clears throat> which if that kind of event happened in 1859, that uh, would knock down not only the, uh, you know, the... Morse code to style uh, telegraphy, but it caused fires to occur in the papers on their desks. It burnt railway ties. It induced currents so powerful in the ground, tell your occurrence, that it caused uh, fires. For that kind of event, it would, today, be, uh, it would be nature's mega EMP event. It would be the play, press, and reset to the 21st century. And uh, what I've been trying to tell people is. The globalists are in a panic to, to use it or lose it. They know that if they don't promulgate their wars, their new world order, their total control system, they're going to lose it because at some point there's going to be an extinction-level event like this, which is most likely extinction-level event will be a CME, and it won't be for North Korea. It'll be from the sun. Although some people idiots try to say it's going to be North Korea. First off, we have space-based weapons, uh, uh, aircraft that can actually do the knuckle with chemical lasers and space-based weapon platforms. If we want to fry their missile on their missile silos, we can literally burn down to a few centimeters the guidance system on their missiles before it even gets off the launch pad. So the well, we whole thing we did that three times, seven seconds right. into their launch. Right. So the fact is that this whole little dance with uh, North Korea is a dance for public consumption. People need to realize North Korea is not a problem. Now, the Middle East is. Because if you have Israel attacking nations that have the poor man's nuke, the bioprepper Russian biological weapons, plus they have Jural Bull's super gun, which was transported from Iraq to uh, Syria. Uh, if you have all these super weapons, which are sequestered there, and Bashar al-Assad is incredibly not likely to I'll tell to you how them, they but, make that super gun. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So what it means basically is we're literally tilting toward Armageddon, and I really believe we're going to get to within a, a, a tenth of an inch from Armageddon. And then, of course, these fools will then say, hey, we have a solution. It's called the New World Order. We'll have a peace treaty. We'll bring together these Abrahamic religions. We'll create a new um, peace that will divide the state of Israel, which is the Oslo Accord. We'll set up the blood sacrifice and let the Jews start their sacrifice in their new refurbished temple. And we'll even let them put the tabernacle of Moses up overnight to just be such good guys. And we'll even let the Muslims and the Jews all worship now in the super capital and sell their trinkets because it'll be a tourist trap for people all over the world to realize that mankind is going to live in peace and we're no longer going to be at war with Islam. And this latest bombing, uh, the bombing that occurred in Boston, indicates these two young men we're radicalized, we're supervised and fought and monitored by the CIA and FBI that was to the, go- to the goal of the globalist and Islam to create this dialectic <clears throat> and that we are at war with Islam for, for two reasons. First, because they're a perfect enemy. Number two, because they can't bring in the New World Order unless they have the dialectic of war. A, a low-grade yeah. burning war against terrorism than a hot war, which is about to happen very soon if we don't stop this foolishness, which means nuclear weapons, scalar weapons, and biological weapons released everywhere. And, and the shocking thing is I think you're being uh, rather optimistic. Very optimistic. <laughs> 
I mean, uh, uh, how about this? And that, I mean, irrationally I mean optimistic. That, and that, 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 that scares me, and I just said it. Uh, uh, let's. Uh, before I forget, let me explain how uh, the the Gerald Bull super gun, what it is, and how how they been able to make it. Gerald Bull was probably the greatest expert on artillery that's ever lived. And he said that uh, there was no reason we couldn't use artillery pieces to launch spacecraft. Of course, the spacecraft would be have, would have to be very hardened to handle the, uh, uh, the shock of the, the launch. But um, he was hired by Saddam Hussein. He built uh, or designed the 210 millimeter uh, self-propelled gun system that the, the Iraqis had, which during the Gulf War was the best long-range artillery piece out there. But of course, uh, our Air Force blasted most of them uh, before they could even use them. Now, there is a the super gun referred to a variety of different calibers of space type launch systems and extreme long range delivery systems. Uh, when I say extreme long range, I'm, I'm referring to artillery type, uh, not necessarily ICBM range, but very long range. In other words, some Someone in the Middle East, at any part of the Middle East, could lob very large projectiles into Israel. Uh, now, how they can make them, and this was uh, kind of a breakthrough. Uh, initially, they thought you had to have extremely hardened uh, cannon-type uh, steel, and you could only get so many uh, firings per tube, and then you'd have to replace the entire cannon tube. Uh, then they they came up with kind of a brainstorm, and by the way, the Mossad killed Gerald Bull uh, along the way, but uh, they took very heavy uh, oil pipeline uh, steel and then hot uh, cable steel and wrap the cable steel around the oil pipeline in multiple directions, kind of like uh, you build plywood. Plywood, you know, yeah, you, they, you they braided have it, have layers of it, and it goes yeah. in different directions. Yeah, you braid it. And uh, so you end up with something very, very strong. Now, uh, you using that... Uh, system you can launch from, say, Syria, you can launch from Iran, uh, you can launch very long range warheads that really are uh, pretty much impossible to it's stop a, a, once they're it's launched. It's also a rail gun. the launch site uh, if you know where it's at. But, yeah, but most of it can it, be underground, and you can launch literally a Toyota into space every 45 seconds. That's the actual size. They could have a small yeah. engine on it, a small rocket engine. They could deorbit it. Uh, these literally can be put into orbit and go anywhere on the planet. And you could relaunch one of them. And by the way, because there's no signature, because there's no th flare signature of a rocket, you're not going to see these launching from the ground, and you're not going to know the trajectory until it actually is coming back in from space. Yeah, you, there could be some smoke and some heat, but there are ways with EIR uh, uh, smoke pods to, to cover that up so the satellites don't pick it up. Yeah, right. you can, in theory, uh, build a lot of these underground and launch uh, suborbital or fully orbital uh, satellites and, and literally impact anywhere on Earth. Now, right. whether or not they have that global reach, I, I don't know. But I do know that, uh, my goodness, uh, even 20 years ago, this technology was out there for the Middle East. Uh, if Israel launches a war against Syria and Iran, or either one, uh, they're going to invite on their heads destruction that will literally uh, kill the six million Jews living in Israel, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. We'll come back. We'll talk more about uh, these topics we brought up, including Ed Dames. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, Major Ed Dames, of course, is well known if you're listening to Coast to Coast Radio or other networks. He was involved with some projects involved with called uh, remote viewing, 
Now, in ancient times, we call it uh, using talents that God's given you called uh, the ability to, to, to see uh, with second sight. Now, I'm just going to give a little bit of insight here so you have an idea. Why is Dr. Deagle, who's an MD, retired now, why am I doing this? Because I'm not just doing it as a doctor. I'm doing it literally as a, as a uh, representative, a witness of the Most High God to tell you the truth of what's coming. And I'm doing that with a prophetic warning. And I've been saying this for some time now. And that's why we bring on scientists like Professor McCanny. And we want to play a little bit of a clip here that was on Coast to Coast Radio just a few days ago on the 23rd. Today is, of course, the 25th. Uh, uh, and just two days ago, and, of course, I'm just going to quote here, Ed Dames is becoming scared now and very concerned about the end of this year when Comet Ison comes in toward the sun. He's even conducting two separate closed-door terminal meetings in Orlando and Reno, and attendees must sign a non-disclosure agreement. He'll be landing, uh, handing out survival zone maps so folks can survive solar blasting that occurs as Ison nears our sun. He also believes Ison is the Hopi's blue star Kachina. Uh, who knows? And, of course, then he goes on with the, some of their comments afterwards. Uh, he foresee, foresees more Fukushima-style events coming in mid, and uh, Mad Max reality, etc., I'm not sure if, if, if what I call I call the global consciousness because I understand the difference between the I and the we, and I have an understanding that transcends the idea of reincarnation. There is a continuous carnation, or or if you want to call it incarnation of all mankind. And if you're a hyper empath like I am, when you're dealing with someone on a medical level and you can tell them what's wrong thousands of miles away, it's because God gives me the vision and the sight and the knowledge of the Most High to actually know what's wrong. And what I see coming here is a grave warning and I think these grave warnings mean the globalists are going to do something catastrophic and that may mean war or economic chaos but they're going to do something catastrophic it's not the end it's one of the final signs of the birth pangs that as we approach the end of the peace treaty but this is a major disaster that's on its way and it may not happen this fall maybe next year but we know that the coronal mass ejection that could crash our civilization will be a comet triggered event uh, please play the first clip uh, John we're going to come back in a moment as we talk about North Korea, the kill shot, Kymet, Comet Ison, with Major Ed Dames. They call him Dr. Doom. Are you concerned about North Korea? No, no, I'm concerned about uh, something that far bigger that will eclipse that, and it's uh, the proverbial kill shot. I think 2013 is the, the year we, we, it's a hot time in the old town tonight. This large passing space body, it's all of the, all the people who have not seen my Kill Shot uh, DVDs, and it's free. They can go to the killshot.com and, and get it still. In that, you'll see I mentioned a large passing space body it either initiates these solar flares, these sequence of, of very large solar flares, or is concomitant with it, attendant with it. We're, we're, we think that the ISON group that discovered this very large comet, we think that that ISON comet is the best candidate. Uh, all these things are, are, are fitting like pieces of a puzzle. So that's why I'm saying I'm putting my stuff on the line now because you know that remote viewing is outside of time. That's, a, that's why we have to work so hard to establish dates. But I'm saying 2013 and early 2014 is when it starts. So all that, I believe, will eclipse all these wars and rumors of the war. Well, this comet uh, that uh, is out there, Comet Ison, right? That could be a candidate here? Well, that group, uh, the, actually, it's a group that discovered it, and there was two men in the group, uh, one from Belarus, one a, a Russian. And we're saying that the comet that they discovered is it's very large. It's going to pass very, it's a sun grazer. It's going to be a sun grazer, and it's going to dump dust on, the, on, the, on Earth uh, coming and going in, in uh, 2014, early 2014. If people can check this out on the Internet uh, themselves. We're saying that, that that plus these two other events that presage they're not precursors of, but they presage the kill shot. It's all so close together that, that and because that large passing space body is the thing that triggers or is, is concurrent with these, the, the initiation of all these huge solar flares, we're saying that, that and that comet passes by in the late, uh, in, in winter, late fall and winter this year, that's when it starts. That's when we're saying it. We, all the stuff really starts. Now, we may have some very large solar flares before that, but we're saying when that comet passes through this neck of the woods, that's when the stuff really hits the fan. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's now, a good point. Yeah. Okay, let's look at the next clip, if we can go to clip number two, uh, John. 
Obama is the last president that we're seeing, uh, period. Things change. What do you mean the last president? What happens There's after? not going to be another presidential election as, uh, as far as we're seeing. Obama is the last president. You, so you're saying we will not have a 2016 election? Correct. Well, who's going to govern? Who's going to lead? Chaos. Yeah. Just, Are we going I back to I don't bed? know what. I have not looked past uh, 2014, and there's just too much happening, yeah. confluence of events. And, okay, uh, let's, let's stop that clip. Uh, one of the things I think people should understand, we're heading toward a time of chaos where people will cling to anything, including this false peace treaty that talks about in Isaiah, the covenant with death. Um, and, uh, you know, what I've been doing in this program called the Nutri Medical Report in Clay and Iron for years is to administer to people and their health. And uh, uh, the, the gift that God's given me to kind of minister to people and tell them thousands of miles away what's wrong, uh, which far exceeds my medical gifts, is a supernatural gift that God gave me as a sign gift to tell people that what I'm telling them otherwise is real. Uh, what we're saying in this program is far different than any other program on this or any other network. You need to understand that chaos is coming, uh, that if you're not prepped, if you're not ready spiritually, if you're not ready physically for a disaster, which will have backup power, food, water, and self-protection, uh, and I'm talking about by the fall, if you're not ready by then, uh, the waves of, and it won't be just one wave, it'll be waves of disaster that are going to strike the earth will be so intense that chaos will rule. And I really see that the population are living in la-la land. They really don't understand how bad this is going to get. And they'll be clinging to things like the peace treaty that will be signed probably during the second term of Obama. They'll cling to the idea that this war has not become regional, but it already has. There's attacks in Lebanon now by Syria. Uh, and now the statements that, that because, of course, chemical weapons are being used by the Syrians, it's now a clear indication that the United States and NATO are planning on attacking uh, Iran and Syria because... What I've heard is up to 50,000 Iranian troops are now operating. Quds Force troops are operating inside Syria now. Russian technicians and scientists are there. This is really going to get scary. And Korea is, to me, a big distraction. But the real danger is the Middle East. That's the real, we call a detonator yeah, it's, it's for... It's the biblical danger. It's, it's, it's the danger that, that uh, the book of Revelation kind of spells right. out very specifically. And it gives specific locations, uh, uh, Amagaten and uh, the, the plains there. And the fact is that uh, right near there is a large uh, Israeli Air Force nuclear base. Uh, you know, uh, we are heading towards uh, the final battle. Now, exactly right. when it will take place and, and how well, all this is going to unfold, you may know better than I. But well, you know, I can tell you the signs to watch for precisely. When but, you hit the stopwatch and you press the the start button, uh, that stopwatch will start on the first day of the peace treaty when it's ratified by the Temple Mount sanctification by rabbinic law that has to happen on the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of David. Uh, when that happens at whatever date, all the other dates roll out from that that are prophetic. 1,230 days later is Purim. 1,260 days later is Peshach. in the statement by Ed James, and of course I've been saying prophetically for this for years, and I, I probably should pull out the first uh, chapter of the scroll uh, and read that, but I want people to understand, right now in a preparatory phase, it's almost like I'm in the back of the cave praying for God's people to repent and turn back, but things are going to start rocking and rolling, and on the first day of that peace treaty, that's when my ministry really gets going. The first day. People need to understand we're, we're begging people to turn back to God. The churches basically are dead. They're into social gospel. They don't want to talk about prophetic things. They don't want to minister to people. They don't want to realize the danger is coming. And we have America with our doors wide open, our Southern Air Defense Command shut down. We don't protect ourselves against nuclear reactors sitting on fault lines when something like a CME will trigger major tectonic events that could cause most of the reactors in the United States to, uh, that are along the fault line in New Madrid or Diablo Canyon in Northern California to become basically disabled, lose containment, and have major radiation release. The situation, in fact, I want you to tell the report of how bad it is in Fukushima and how insane it is to ever think that they're ever going to repair it or even stop the radiation releases. After that earthquake 5.2, that my radiation detector went from an average of 26 to 30 counts per minute up to 114 for four days. That's not good. 
That means we're constantly being bathed in radio concentrating uh, a, a constant stream of radioisotopes in our bodies, our air, food, and water, and it's impinging on our population, especially the unborn and the elderly. It's basically degrading human fertility, it's degrading human IQ, and it's causing dementia. It's causing cancer, it's causing thyroid failure in newborns, so we're getting a new diagnosis now, a massive explosion of neonatal hypothyroidism. So, uh, Chris, tell us about how bad the situation is from this latest article you just sent me, which I'll post up today. Okay, well, Lucas Hickson at informable.com, which is a really good source of information, he wrote a really nice, oh, a good article, very factual, and it was yeah. based on the uh, the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency's uh they sent a they sent an investigating team to see if decommissioning that's a that's a big fat word decommissioning but uh, Fukushima is is actually possible. decommissioning that is such a lie we have a nuclear yeah. waste site and they call it decommissioning no the site was decommissioned the day the tsunami and earthquake struck right now we have right. a toxic it, waste site where they've done nothing that I suggested or anybody else uh, uh, that has two clues about nuclear sites. No corium catcher, no seawall, no containment of the groundwater, no containment of stream steam jets that are developing miles away from the site could pop up in a schoolyard miles away from Fukushima, go to the under oceanic areas and release directly into the ocean. Thousands of uh, millions of becquerels per hour. I mean, it's unbelievable what's going on. And Obama never has any teleprompter statements about it. We never have anything from our uh, nuclear agencies here. We have no international activity on the part of the United Nations. Everybody is is obscenely silent. Uh, Chris, wasn't hearing... the statement uh, was this the one that they said it's going to be forty years of the cleanup effort? Well, this the head of this uh, investigating group admitted that that would be optimistic. So well, let, let, let me read exactly what they said. Up, I think it might be very optimistic. Uh, yeah, let me read yeah. the exact statement from the article. It says, uh, and this is from uh, Lucas Hickson. After investigating the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant last week, Juan Carlos Lendillo, the head of the investigating team, admitted that the work to decommission the, and stabilize the reactors, reactors the plant is so complex that it is impossible, in quotes, for experts to predict how long the project may last. Uh, in quotes, as for the duration of the decommissioning project, this is something that you can define in your plans, but in my view, it will be nearly impossible to ensure the time for decommissioning such a complex facility is less than 30 to 40 years, and it is currently established in the roadmap, uh, Lentillo that's, said. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really the reason why I raised concern so early on in it, because I understood really what, what was going on there. And I'm not the only one. I'm not saying I'm the only one. I just well, decided that well, we needed to. Re somebody needed to say it. And, well, uh, 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 ten years ago, the population of Japan was around 121 million. Uh, it's predicted that at the current rate of decrease, this is before Fukushima Daiichi, this is from 10 years ago, decreased fertility because they have 1.37 children per, per, per married couple in Japan, and you need 2.07 to maintain a population uh, at the current death rate there. And they have long, they had long lives. They don't have it anymore. What that means is we're going to be seeing the population of Japan drop dramatically. And what we're seeing is not, and we're going to see this in the Northern Hemisphere, is not a population explosion, but a population implosion. We're going to see a children of men scenario, which that movie came out a decade ago. It basically said, you know, the youngest person that was born died. The youngest person that was born died. Now get this, we're talking about... Until you submit your gametes to a laboratory for uh, gamete intrafallopian tube transport, GIFT it's called, uh, or some form of IVF, intrafallopian tube uh, uh, fertility or artificial uteri to be grown in a facility, in a laboratory in an artificial uterus, human beings, if this continues, won't be able to reproduce. We're going to see a massive explosion of disease and dementia and heart disease and other problems. And the bioaccumulation uh, Dr. Bill, this is not collapse. only from, from uh, radiation. If you look at what they've done with genetically modified food, both Absolutely. corn and wheat and corns and everything, particularly high fructose corn syrup, well, it's, they're, they're killing our ability as a species to reproduce. Well, the, uh, the promoter genes are not stabilized. They're not intercalated into the chromosomes, and they jump out, and they actually can get into your cells and promote or turn on genes that shouldn't be turned on. So what's happening is we're being, we have now the Sakhalin Island Svalbard Norway facility owned by Bill Gates and the other globalists that are putting the 
non-GMO seeds, and they're poisoning us with GMO. I call it the seeds of death. It was actually a prophecy that I gave in 1998 when I traveled with the Prophecy Club in 1999 about the seeds of death. Well, GM seeds are the seeds of death. You can't use them beyond the third generation. You can't use those seeds to grow other plants. The seeds themselves uh, are designed to literally live in a toxic world, including new ones now that can tolerate aluminum uh, nanoparticles, which are being put in the upper atmosphere to protect the earth from a coronal mass ejection. Because the globalists are fully aware, and I spent an entire evening with Dr. Isley back in 1997, that a CME is coming from the sun in the early 21st century, and now we're at that time where 2013 is the year when the grave danger this year and next year of a CME wiping out civilization as we know it and wiping out the control grid of the power elite uh, is very possible very possible well it it fits with the electric universe model and if you uh, go to uh, Jeff Rins's site uh, he's for years he's uh, uh, well, carried articles say, on the, the, the best electric is, universe model and the, I happen the to best site is to go to the James two McCanny best, uh, yeah. physics models out there the best one to go for that is Dr. McCanny. That's J M C C S C I dot com. He's got. Uh, he is the inventor of the electric universe. Yeah. Professor McCanny. Um, these cripple reactors on site are still releasing enormous amounts of radiation, both aerially into the ocean and TEPCO officials are unable to determine the amount of seepage taking place underneath the devastated reactor buildings, where radiation levels are too high for humans to enter and investigate. Due to close proximity to the ocean, these underground leaks pose serious contamination threats and increase the possibility of leaking radioactive water to the, uh, be affected by rising tides and elevated groundwater levels, which are unstoppable. Uh, guess what? I, uh, this is not a future event. We don't need to prophesy. This is a past event. We are literally like doing an autopsy here in the news and technologically doing an autopsy of these events. And people still want to argue with us? What the hell's wrong? Well, How come we, people we, can we be that malignantly to... ignorant and stupid that they don't realize how desperately late the hour is when we're now being poisoned by radiotoxins, genetically modified food, scalar radiation from smart meters, and our globalist maniacs want to tax us to death. They're now talking about an Internet uh, sales tax. They want, to, they want to have a flat tax they're talking about now. They want to have a globalist uh, printing so much money that our dollar blows out in the bond market. And they didn't want to bail in our money if we have it deposited in bank accounts, considering us unsecured investors in banks. I mean, if people don't get the message that it's the end of the road, I don't know what else will. Remember, we were the first ones really to go public with the word saying that stabilization and cold shutdown can no longer apply to Fukushima. We were the ones that came out with uh, it's no longer a power plant. It is a waste generation facility with no off switch. And it's, it's, it's true. I mean, look how long it took for, for any kind of a report to come out and say such yeah, a exactly. thing. Yeah, exactly. And after no off can, switch uh, for hundreds of years. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. Back in the moment. Welcome back, and uh, and just to kind of summarize, uh, you know, there's a number of very bad events about to happen, and uh, the good news is that that God is on the throne and He's not nervous. If we repent, if we ask for inspiration as to what to do and how to prep, not just personally but as a community, if we witness to our friends, uh, I like one of the songs I I like. It's a Kurt Pop song. It says, "Live, uh, live every day like it's the day you're going to die." If if you get up in the morning and live like today is the last day you're going to spend on earth, and you uh, love everyone around you and you speak the truth and you you listen to the voice of the Most High God and you do the right thing, that is the day where you've literally prayed through your day to God. And that's what needs to happen. Our population needs to repent. We have a news media that's so decrepit now, no one, just like in the Soviet Union, no one in the right mind listens to CNN unless you've had a brain injury. Nobody listens to these programs other than to hear the periphery of what happened, but certainly not the interpretation of what is going on. Uh, because if you listen to the yahoos, and that includes, by the way, a lot of alternative media that pick up one fact or another and run with it when it really doesn't make sense, where they don't understand the full play of the complexity, where we do have terrorists with the Eastern European, but we do have manipulation by the CIA and even uh, Samalan uh, Tsarnaev, actually attended a CIA conference. I mean, i got a report right here. Uh, 
and the organization was directly there to destabilize the Soviet Union, and is still present in Dagestan and in Chechnya. And once totally you get into the... that whole CIA for intelligence agency type uh, environment, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all lies. It's all you know, death, destruction. Right. And so, what I suspect will happen, and I got another report, and this is one that I'm also coming up on my radar because I have. You know, I get prophetic visions, and I can tell you, I'm very, very concerned, and I don't have dates. I'm very concerned that the next events will be there a nuke going off in a major city in the United States or at a major sporting event. We're not just talking about a dirty bomb. we got medical waste uh, stuck around a regular conventional bomb like C4 or RDX. I'm talking about a nuclear weapon. And maybe not just a suitcase nuke, but a container-sized nuke that will take out a chunk of a large city like Los Angeles, or Chicago or Atlanta, and I'm very concerned that uh, the the statements made a few years ago by Super Bowl Steve were almost prophetic because we were looking at the idea of an explosion in the Super Bowl. Uh, and by the way, the 2,400 police and, and uh, SEAL teams uh, four and et cetera that were there, they didn't stop those bombs from going on. They did also didn't uh, deal with all the anomalies, including the backpack anomalies, the fact there were three bombs and not two. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. Well, yeah, and, you if, know, if and, and the, the, and the, the, and the, the Saudi Boston guy being Marathon deported. Boston Massacre, the Boston Marathon bombing narrative is unraveling daily. And, for instance, there's the black and tans, the photos of all these guys with black jackets and tan pants. Some of them had caps that indicate they were probably SEAL Team 4 or one of the SEAL teams. And some of these guys had backpacks, and at least one of them, the backpack matched the, the backpack that the uh, remains of was photographed. And he didn't. He walked away without a backpack on. Uh, I saw that. We now know that uh, the one of the, the the guy that's wounded is supposedly he his backpack was gone. We know that uh, there's a high likelihood it was uh, photoshopped out. And there are other photos of him after the blast running away with the backpack on. There's just yeah, I see that too. Also, you know, they said he was involved in the shootout at at the the, the boat where they he, captured. He was unarmed. He had no arms. There was no gun. He had no gun. And when he got out of the boat, he was not wounded. So how did he get shot in the throat? And et cetera. And he couldn't talk. And then he, then now he's made a statement admitting he, he was involved. And, I mean, it, it, the narrative is unraveling because it's a lie, just like the lies at, at 911 and 7-7 in London, the lies at, at Columbine, the lies at uh, 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 the Joker movie theater. Theater shooting the lines at the lies at Sandy Hook. These are false flag events designed to drive America into chaos, to fear, and to get the Americans to give up their rights. You notice you had armed military type um, uh, people going through the streets in armored vehicles, forcing people out of their homes without oh, warrants. Yeah. I mean, this is precisely why we had a revolution. The English were doing that in. Boston. Boston and other places. Right, and, and we, by the way, it was done the same. As, it, it was done right on that Patriots Day, and it's, I want to change. The, by the way, the name of 9/11 from 9/11 uh, to what I call Wildebeest Day. How about that? Do you like that? <laughs> when you get the I, lion, I think in, it was a nightmare from hell day. Yeah, but. yeah, exactly. But I'm trying to use the dark humor here so for people to realize we're being herded. We're being herded by terror. Terror is the weapon. It's the stick. It's the it's the prodding. Uh, and and the know. one character that that promoted was years ago when he was first prime minister the first time was Netanyahu. He's the one that that started to sell this whole concept of terrorism and we're in it with Israel against terrorism and we're in a war against terrorism. Uh, terrorism is a word. It's it's not a state. It's not an act. But this is this is all a narrative. That's, that's being crafted by the six companies that own 96% of the American news media. The, they're all globalist-owned, Zionist-run. This is a, 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 a narrative that's taking Israel to its destruction, taking the West to its destruction. This is a narrative that serves one interest, and that is the interest of Satan only. Right. What, what I see happening uh, this year is I see the bond market blowing out. I see parallel with the economic collapse and airborne plague. 
That's what I'm talking about prophetically. I see, I can't tell you dates, but I see this year, next year, parallel with an economic collapse will be an airborne plague You're of right. something, it's whether coming. it's an avian swine flu or a coronavirus, which is now in, in, showed up in Germany and Britain. This new one, H7N9, it replicates eight times faster, mutates eight times faster than any other known virus. In fact, when they ship samples over, they will only ship to Class 3 Biosafety Level 3 labs in Canada and elsewhere because it's so That's damn dangerous. That's where it came from, <laughs> a Biosafety no, the problem Level is, 3 or 4 lab. Right. Now, the problem is we have a situation here where they want to wipe out normal money. They want it all in their matrix supercomputers. They want you to have no cash, no coin, no bartering, every other form of exchange. And this is, by the way, in Patriot Act 1. It's already in the text which they haven't implemented yet, but it's there. They always have these, quote, laws, even if they're unethical, illegal, or unconstitutional, circumscribed in writing before they do something. It's part of a process of Masonic satanic activity, part of the ceremony of hoodwinking to indicate that we are truly animals and we do need our throats slit by the global elite uh, uh, administrative uh, satanic masters. Yeah, well, the, the, the laws are often 300 to 600 pages long. Or more if you, thousands. If you, if you read them, if you started to read the act that they passed, yeah, sometimes they're well over a thousand pages. It would take you several days to get through them. Remember, this this isn't a novel. These are complicated legal things, and they're written by hundreds of attorneys. And if you if you want to go nuts, try to try to read one of the more complicated laws. I mean, it's just like no way. Yeah. Yeah. I have several degrees, and, and I, after uh, a few hours, I would literally be zonkers because they're so con, con, contraluted and... and uh, Obfuscated and you know, convoluted, yeah. yeah it, it, it turns your brain inside out. Uh, Chris, I want you to give us a final word on what you think will happen if we have a major CME-triggered earthquakes in, in Japan and elsewhere. What will happen? Oh, uh, you're going to see, well... You want, you want long-term station blackouts occurring at simultaneous plants? And, and, and super quakes. Work. We're talking about level 7 to 8 and plus, 9 plus earthquakes striking uh, New Madrid fault system. Earthquakes, fault lines. By the way, there's a lot of fault lines in Switzerland, which is why they're switching to shutting More. down all their plants, but too slow. And uh, uh, our Diablo uh, Canyon plant, which is... I think you know is, the answer, Dr. Bill. I think you know the answer. And that would be a multitude more of Fukushima-style events. That's the only yeah, answer it can be. be It'd be like the, 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 the seeds of the Fukushima Daiichi plant have now mushroomed into radioactive wastelands along the southwestern uh, eastern United States uh, in areas in Central Europe and in Switzerland uh, and in areas like in China, which is earthquake central. They just had another few big earthquakes that killed a lot of people. And most people don't realize the 30, they built 35 reactors in the last few years in China, and many of them are very near or on fault lines. Yeah. Insanity. Yeah, it's uh, humanity is on a race to the open maw of the bottomless pit of a volcanic matrix of evil. And we're being energized by Satan and gutlessness and willing to attack the messengers that are sent by the Most High God to tell them to repent so humanity will still be here on the earth to worship the Creator. That's how bad this is and how desperately late the hour is. And we're not talking about the future. We're talking about things that have already happened that are now transpiring and people ignore them as if it's not happened at all. Fukushima didn't happen. Makondo, which is the devil's food drilling site three years ago, didn't happen. And we aren't in the midst of an expanding war in the Middle East or more. Amazing. <laughs>